this forgotten hero, or should I say heroine, was a wonderful lady revivalist, a very rare thing in the mid-19th century. Geraldine Hooper was born in 1841 in Bath. She was descended from a Marian martyr, Bishop Hooper. She was a beautiful society lady of sparkling wit and ready repartee. She was, had a beautiful voice and she was offered a contract as a professional singer when she was 17, but she turned it down. And after a bit of a scandal, she decided she wanted to li live a religious life. She spent six months trying to find God through works. And then she was taken to Holy Trinity Bath for a service and there she, uh, the void in her was filled and she found peace and was converted. Someone then took her to a Bible study led by the revivalist William Haslam. And she then had to decide whether she was to be a society lady or a religious lady. One of them had to go. And having decided, she began to help Haslam in his work. He, she started with helping people, the singers and helping with the people who had recently come to Jesus. In 1862, Haslam was sick and had to go away for his health for some rest. And so Geraldine took on his work, including the church meetings. Geraldine often ministered to the poor and soon she started to have gospel meetings and people came from all over the city to, to these meetings and many got converted. This was a time when there was a lot of prejudice against women speakers and it was all the more remarkable the success Geraldine had in her ministry. Geraldine was always a sickly person and at this time she got ill and had to take a rest and about this time she had a dream and in this dream she saw multitudes of people rushing towards a spiritual death and this dream made her realize the urgency of speaking to people about Jesus. In 1863 Haslam left Bath because of the health of his wife. The Lord sent him to Norfolk, to two tiny parishes, one Hassingham, where we are now, and the other Buckingham, which is where his vicarage was, which is two miles away. Geraldine took over all the work that Haslam had been doing, and according to Haslam, she did a better job of it than he did. But she got sick again and she needed to leave Bath to go for a rest and she decided to go and visit the Haslams. But what she didn't know was a huge revival had begun here just days after Haslam arrived. So this is where Geraldine came to rest, Haslam's vicarage. But she got no rest because she was recruited into the revival. And she took a meeting in a barn nearby where Haslam said she lit a fresh fire and a very powerful one at that. Her fame spread. Norfolk was the beginning of her wider ministry. She was able to control the largest and roughest of meetings with her wit and her repartee. And the power of God that flowed through her was irresistible. Over the next eight years, she spoke almost 4,000 times to thousands at a time. And often there were not enough seats in the venues to satisfy the hungry crowds. Her ministry was extraordinarily successful. 
She mainly ministered in the southern half of England and particularly Luton, where she often spoke to between four and 7,000 people. The effect she had on the people was substantial. One vicar banned his congregation from going to hear her because he said it was unscriptural for a woman to preach. But when they disobeyed him and he saw the changes in their lifestyles, having heard her, he had to change his mind. We've moved now to a field outside of Buckingham Church. And this is a very unusual church because there are no roads going to it. So on a Sunday, people would be walking along this path across the field to get to church. It would have been at the center of the revival and uh, Geraldine would have preached there. Geraldine had a way of including in her preaching everyday things that her congregation would be able to relate to, much as Jesus did. The main characteristic that attracted people to her was the love that was in her. She poured out love wherever she went and would go to any lengths to help someone in need. She was just full of the love of Jesus and people could not fail to notice it and be drawn to her and to the Jesus she spoke of. In 1868, Geraldine married Henry Denning, who was also a revivalist and who was also a descendant from a Marian martyr, this time Thomas Cranmer. And two years later, she had a baby girl, but she knew that she would not live to raise her. Doctors had been telling her for a while that she had to slow down, otherwise her health would be endangered but Geraldine just continued on doing the Lord's work. And in 1872, she caught a streptococcal infection, which today would easily have been uh, cured by uh, antibiotics. And even in those days, it was not thought to be fatal, but the infection went to her eyes and she became blind and then to her brain and a few days later she died. She was only 31 years old. Geraldine Hooper was dearly loved and thousands went to her funeral. She was an amazing woman and she achieved so much in such a short time. And we need to learn from her. Firstly, we don't know when we're going to die. Hopefully it will be in many years time, but it might not be. So we need to pursue what God is calling us to do and not delay. And like many of these amazing people I am doing films about, the core of Geraldine was love. And we need to remember how powerful love is and we need to pour it out wherever we can.